So how long you been in, in Germany? I know you're originally or at least you were from California. How long you been in Germany? Um, pretty close to 16 years now. Wow. Wow. Yeah. I love the new album, by the way. Yeah, I mean, um, thank you. <laughs> a yeah. lot of people, yeah, a lot. I got a lot of good reviews from it. Actually, uh, you know, Viva La Rock, which I was surprised, you know. I mean, they're like, that's old school stuff from the 70s, you know. But they put it as in the top five. Uh, we are number three on the top 10 albums of the year. Nice. Rancid made number one, which is crazy. And Iggy Pop named number four. <laughs> So they were right under us. So Iggy Pop is behind you guys by one slot. That's crazy cool. Yeah, and Fear the Record, uh, the Fear of the New Album was uh, under Iggy Pop. So it was totally cool to see that, you know, these old school guys, I mean, the old school, I mean, people of rock. I mean, that was around the 70s, you know. I know It was through the 80s and 90s and all that, but that's where it started you know and it was pretty it's pretty cool you know that they put us in the top 10 you know they still feature a lot of old school bands that's pretty much what they do but it's pretty surprising that they paid attention to us you know well the album is great man uh mind warfare is the new album that people are listening and don't know that uh total chaos i think it's your first album in like eight years am i right yeah, the last record came out in 2015. World of okay. You know, and that was like total DIY. We did it ourselves. We recorded it. We put it out ourselves. This one, we're kind of working with a couple of labels and they're doing it, you know, for us because <clears throat> the last like three years or so or four years, I kind of like financially got tr devastated from not be able to tour and not do what we normally do and i wasn't able to fund anything <laughs> you yeah know? Can, right, man do you have a day job man or do you primarily just do music related and, and social kind I of do, i do 90 90 percent of what i do is music related i usually i do my band and then i do a booking agency i book like but i don't book a lot of tours but i book some and I book those, and uh, I book, do a tour with my band, and I book some tours for other bands, but only like three or four bands. Yeah, very cool. Uh, are you um, from uh, just a, just a question as a fan of punk rock? Are you familiar with the band from Kenosha, Wisconsin, called Ten Ninety Six? Kenosha. No, I mean I know Kenosha, but no, no, I don't think so. Does okay. ring a bell? Yeah, they were like one of my old school favorite punk bands from the 80s. And I thought as a fan, I wonder if you'd heard those cats or not. Um, I mean, I love Kenosha, man. We we played there a few times and it was always good fun. You know, uh, really good fun. We've had a lot of good times there. Although we haven't been there in a long time. But uh, we the last few times we were there was awesome. Yeah, Kenosha is one of my second homes back in the 80s and 90s. I have a lot of friends there, connections. Oh, uh, you, know, remember, uh, you know Beautiful Bert? Oh, I was really good friends with Beautiful Bert, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he's a funny guy. I love that guy. I just think because I know he's Kenosha. He's old school Kenosha guy, you know. <laughs> oh, Bert yeah, was... I know he passed away recently or like four or five years ago, I think it was. Yeah. But, yeah, I was. I was. I went to his his memorial, and we played at his his memorial concert. Actually, my band did. That was fun. It was sad, bittersweet. Yeah, right. I know. I knew, knew that guy. Gosh, since the early '80s, man. I, I knew before he was even in bands. But he was yeah. a, a real one, man. Definitely a real one. Uh, I know he was a fan of you guys too, by the way. For yeah, sure. he came to our shows. He came like a. Uh, I think the last time I saw was a. I don't know. Maybe it was 2015 or something. I'm not really sure. It's been a while. Let me just say. Or maybe it was 2014. I don't know. We used to play Kenosha like every other year. I and mean, then all of a sudden we just stopped playing there because, I don't know, stuff changed. You know, um, the club that we used to play a lot over there, I forgot what it's called, but they got new management. And 
Patrick's. Huh? Might have been Patrick's. Maybe. Yeah, it sounds familiar. Yeah, and you know, did, did you get to witness beautiful Bert or share a stage with him? Oh, he was hanging out with us. We were like hanging out in the parking lot, you know. Uh, <laughs> uh, I don't remember we played. He played with us, but he was always hanging out with us. I, I if he did play it, or I didn't see it, or maybe I don't remember. <laughs> you know, hey, uh, um, everybody, everybody in uh, Wisconsin, uh, Kenosha, were like hooking us up with beers and stuff. So we we're getting really, really, really drunk. You know what I mean? <laughs> So things become a blur really quick, you know. I think we we played with this band called Piss Officer. I think it was called. Yeah, um, their singer Frank died. Their singer Frank passed away a few years ago too. No way! <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, yeah, they were they were always hooking us up, man. Like I would write him. This is back in MySpace days, and he would like, yeah, dude, I got you, got you, this whatever. I'm like, okay, cool, we're coming through, and we play, and it was a great show every time. Uh, who are some of your very favorite punk bands of all time? Um, when I got into punk around, I got into punk in the really maybe mid-ish 80s, like around 83, 84, I started really listening to punk rock. Um, the bands that I, I, the story is like the basically there was this guy. Well, it, there's more than this story, but I'm just gonna go really cut to the short. This guy uh, from Boston moved into the neighborhood, and he gave me like a mixtape. He said, "Listen, to this shit, this is the real stuff." Because I told him, he asked me if I like punk, and I said, "Yeah, I like Billy Idol." <laughs> he goes, "That's not punk." He goes, "Listen to this shit," and he gives me a mixtape. And the first band was Black Flag, wow, you know, yeah. with White Minority, and then it had like, it had it had like all kinds of stuff, uh, the Clash, the it had like Why Riot, I Want to Riot, you know, and it just had all this different stuff on it, and I was blown away. So I started buying all these records, you know what I mean? Like I bought Black Flag, I bought the Dick Kennedys, I bought the Clash. Um, and that was pretty much when I got into punk rock. Uh, I immediately, I mean, I already had ties to it before that because I used to skateboard and we used to go to the skate park. Uh, there's a place called Pipeline in Pomona, California. And we used to go skateboarding down there. And all, all half, most of the people that were there were punk rock, punk rock kids or related to punk rock. You know what I mean? One way or another. So, it, you know, 80s, you know. And uh, yeah, that's when I got in the punk scene, and then I started really going to shows. And actually, Doug, the guy from Boston who gave me the mixtape, later took me to like a bunch of shows. Like, he took me to see DI, who went and saw Social Distortion back in the early 80s when they were still a total punk band and not a rockabilly band or wherever they are now. And uh, and I remember hanging out with um. I was like 15 or 16 and I was hanging out behind the dumpster in Chino, California with Mike Ness and he was drinking beers and he gave me Budweiser and I was drinking Budweiser with him. Nice. Wow. Yeah, you know, this is like 85, 84, 85, you know. It's before he went to, he, he got arrested for something. I think it was drug possession or something or maybe multiple drug possession and then he ended up going to prison, Mike Ness. And when he got out of prison, he was a, not the same man at all. He was, he completely cleaned up. He stopped doing everything. And his attitude was not the same. Wow. Yeah, because I saw, I saw him in 88 when they were doing their prison bound tour. And they had the album prison bound. And I guess he wrote that song about when he went to jail. He was only in jail for like six months or something, but. Whatever, I guess that's prison for him. <laughs> so that changed him for the better, you think, or the worse? Well, maybe it's for the better for like for his health and stuff, and maybe for the people he's he cares about around him. But but as far as for the punk community, it's it made him worse. It, yeah, he uh, he didn't he didn't care about the punk scene anymore. 
Not yeah. at all. Um, he didn't care about the kids. He didn't care about any of that stuff anymore. At least as far as I know. I mean, Dennis, the guitar, the last original member of the band, well, not original, but last long-standing member when he passed away he was still down to earth man but um yeah mike no nah, not at all <laughs> you know but whatever you know well you know um since you guys started the band in 89 or people started hearing about total chaos in 1989 and you came out of pomona california you've had a, quite a few uh, different people come in and out of the band can you let us know who's currently in the band total chaos sean smash which has been in the band so, well i asked sean to join the band in 94 it was like the end of 94 um i asked sean if he wanted to join the band and he said yes well hell yeah but we decided we we rehearsed with him. I think it was in December of '94, and and we were and he stayed at my house for like three months, like December, January, February, March. I think he stayed till March, and we recorded Patriarch Shock without Sean with the other guy. Um, but Sean was Sean was there, <laughs> the guy who replaced the guy who was playing on the record. Shot. Technically, we should have uh, just replaced Ron right off the bat with Sean, but we didn't because we were scared that it would. We already had all the songs written, and we didn't want to interrupt it. And we didn't. We weren't. We were young. Um, yeah. But other than that, um, Miguel Conflict has been in the band for since 2010, and. Um, yeah, Gearbox decided he didn't want to do it anymore because he had a kid, another kid. I mean, he came back. He left. He left in ninety. He left in ninety five, the end of ninety five, and then he came back in uh, two thousand and two, and then he left again in two thousand and nine, and then we got Gearbox. Come, not Gearbox. We got. Uh, we got Miguel conflict, and uh, and then after that, we had a Joe Bastard left in 2010. Oh uh, no, Joe left in 2000, the bass player. And after that, we had millions of bass players. We we were running through them as fast as possible because all of them were assholes, you know. Like every every one of them, were, they just didn't connect with the band whatsoever, you know. Um, and then we finally got this guy, Jordy. He's been in the band now for seven years, almost eight, actually. And right. uh, he's doing good. He's doing good. He's young. He's the youngest guy in the band by far. Uh, but he's been with us for almost eight years, and he's doing good. He's he's Because all of us are old guys, you know, like me, Sean. And me and Sean, uh, I'm 52, and Sean's 50, and uh, Miguel, I think, is like, 48 or 47 or something and uh and miguel is like uh i mean not miguel i'm sorry and then uh jordy's like not even 30 years old <laughs> i think he's 29 i think <laughs> there quite a gap <laughs> yeah he's a big kid he's a he's a kid but he acts like a kid too but at the same time he acts like an old man too it's kind of weird it's kind of a weird thing. His father was a huge punk rock guy, and he grew up around punk. His mom and dad were both punk rockers, so he grew up with the whole punk scene around him his entire life. Eric, love your new uh, Rise Up video, by the way. We're going to play Rise Up on the show after this interview. Did you film that in Germany? Um, yeah, actually, I was filmed in Germany. Uh, I was thinking... It wasn't filmed all in Germany. I think part of it, the dungeon scene where the girl is in the in the uh, chains, or girl was in chains. That was filmed in Netherlands, which is which is just like two hours away from where I live, uh, oh, wow. but actually three hours. Well, two and a half hours from where I live. That was filmed in Netherlands because our bass player is Dutch. Uh, by the way, it was filmed in. Ba I think it's the basement of his uh of his flat where he lives. He lives like in a old uh like I don't know like old school house, 
And I guess in the basement, there was like this place. I didn't see it because I wasn't there. Um, I was I was at my house and they filmed it. I didn't even care because uh, Jordy and uh, our friend Paul, who filmed it, they were they were all there. And we me and uh, me and uh, Sean and whoever were at my house here in Bremen, which is about three hours away from where Jordy lives. Because we have a bigger house, Jordy. I mean, I have a. I actually have a house. Um, Jordy has like a one room place. You know what I mean? So it's it's, it's really not really. I mean, we yeah, we could stay there for the night, but you know, it's not really. It's like one of those studio apartments. It has a loft, and they basically all sleep in the living room. Basically, and the kitchen's in the living room as well. And it's a big studio apartment, but it's still a studio apartment. You know. Yeah. What do you guys have planned coming up, Rob? What's you guys going on tour? Got any other videos coming out? Any things planned for the band? We were supposed to be War is a Racket supposed to be a video. It's supposed to be coming. They're working on it right now, but I I don't know how, why they're taking so long because they've had almost all the video footage for a long time. I don't know what's taking so long for them to finish it, but and the cool. next two the next tour is in uh, Mexico in uh, one month, exactly one month. How many uh, towns or cities in Mexico are you playing? We're just playing four shows, oh, four shows, four cities. Oh. Awesome. What are the shows like there, man? I haven't. I know things have drastically changed in Mexico, but I don't know about the, the music scene. Oh, it's huge. It's, they're going to be huge, uh, especially Mexico City. It's going to be like probably easily two or three thousand people a show. Nice. Yeah, well, I really appreciate uh, the fact that you took the time to chat with us here at the Church of Rock. We're going to actually follow this interview with your song, Rise Up, from the new Mind Warfare album, which I advise people to check out if you're uh, into uh, Total Chaos or Punk Rock. You'll love uh, Mind Warfare. It's got the energy and passion, and it's been eight years, man, since they put out an album, so consider it. I'm sure it's on all music streaming platforms and probably available physically, I'm guessing. Yep, it's on vinyl and CD. Uh, yeah, it's on vinyl and CD. Um, wherever you can find it. You know, the, uh, things have changed since, you know, the old days, man, when you used to be able to just roll over to the record store and pick up whatever you want. Things ain't like that no more because, you know, the digital world kind of killed the music industry for the most part. Uh, at least killed it on the record sales part. But, uh, yeah, it's, we have, it's on vinyl and CD. Well, thanks so much for your time, man. Uh, I really appreciate it, Rob, and I uh, look forward to, uh, to checking out your the next video when it pops up, man. All right, man. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> Absolutely, man. Lots of uh, best of luck to you and the band, and thanks again. All right, bro. See you, right? Cheers. Rob Chaos from Total Chaos, my friends, for the Church of Rock radio show. We're going to roll into the Rise Up the music video. It's a song from the album as well. It's exactly one minute and 53 seconds, too, man. And it rocks. Here the Church of Rock and Chaos can keep.